believe so. That doesn't mean I don't know. Um, okay, this is uh, run-up expressions and equations. Uh, it carries on a little bit from completing the square and solving for it and dealing with uh, irrational numbers. I'm going to go back because I just finished doing this with the grade 10s. And so I've gone back actually and doing more work with them with the grade 10s because if you recall last year, um, the majority of these struggled with this. So we want to make sure that we look back and say, okay, well, what is it that I'm not getting and what is it that I am getting? So it starts like this, okay? Square root of 12 is considered an entire radical. And I can change that entire radical into a mixed radical. And how I do that is simple. I find a number that goes into 12 that's a perfect square. So what number goes into 12 that's a perfect square? 4 does. So if I change this to square root 4 times the square root of 3, that's the same as square root 12. Agreed? What's the square root of 4? 2. That is what I refer to as a mixed radical. Okay? A mixed radical has a rational coefficient. <coughs> One or greater, or not necessarily. It can be a negative, but it's not zero. Okay, in front of it. And then you have a radicand, which is the uh, value that's inside the square root. We can do the same thing with cube roots as well. All right. If I want to change that mixed one into a into a or sorry, an entire one into a mixed one. I can find a perfect cube that goes into 16. Well, what's a perfect cube that goes into 16? 8 does. So I have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. What's the cube root of 8? Cube root of 8 is 2. 2 cube root 2. Could, can I add these two guys together? Can I add them together in the way they're written right now? No. Apples, oranges. You have to have, in order to have like and add them together, you have to have the radicand be in the exact same in both cases in order to add them together. So 2 root 3 plus 4 root 3 is 6 root 3. Okay, let's say that I then wanted to take that numerical value, and I wanted to, instead of having it as a mixed radical, I want to change it to an entire radical. So I have to work back the process now. Okay? So I want this number under a square root without changing the question itself. How do I make this value 6 and put it under a square root? Say that again. Well, what would be the opposite of square rooting? Squaring. Squaring it. So if I do the opposite to it, then I'm not changing it, correct? So if I go the square root of 6 squared times square root 3, right? What is, this, what is 6 squared? 36. What's the square root of 36? Still 6, right? So if I square root it and square it, I'm not changing it. Then this gives me root 36 times square root 3, right, which is the same as 108. So that's how I change from a mixed radical into an entire radical. All right, I square it and then take the square root of it. Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so if I have the cube root of, oh sorry, let's do this. Make it simple, 2 cube root 4. Okay, if I wanted to change that into an entire radical then, all right, what am I going to do to the 2 in order to get it in underneath the cube root? I'm going to cube it. So I'm going to cube root of 2 cubed times the cube root of 4. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 4 is? 32. 
So same process applies. So I think most of you probably didn't struggle much with this, the converting going back and forth. Where you did struggle with it is the moment I put variables in there. And then it became a little bit more confusing. All right, so let's look at this example to begin with. If I have the square root of x to the 7, and I said to you, I want to write this as a mixed radicand, or radical, right? If I rewrote this square root, instead of writing this as a square root, and I wrote it as an exponent, what is the exponent? <coughs> No. Forget. Go ahead. Negative two. Negative two. Still not right. Okay. Let me show you why. Okay. Hold on. You both said the same thing. You both said negative. Right. Correct. Okay. So if I have x to the negative two then, what is that? That's like saying one over x squared. Right? Remember the rules? Okay? So that's not going to work for us. So take another stab at it. Decimal. Yeah, I could. Yeah, but I'm not going to use a decimal. Okay, you're right. x to the seventh to the one half. Right? So the square root can be written as an exponent to the one half. The cube root could be written to the exponent of one third. The fourth root can be written to the exponent of one quarter. Okay? So now, there is a complicated way, there's a simple way of looking at this question and how to do it. All right? The simple way for me to do this is to say, okay, how many twos do I, do I get going into seven? Evenly. I get three, and how many do I have left over? One. So if I rewrote this, this is the more complicated way, but whatever. x to the 6 to the 1 half times x to the 1 to the 1 half, like that, right? Because essentially that's what you're saying. 3 times 2 is 6, correct? <coughs> okay. So 6 times a half gives me x cubed, and then this has to remain as square root x. Okay. One way to do it, one way to look at it. A second way to do it would be to take um, hmm, oh, well, I can do it like this, I suppose. Obviously, you're not going to do this very often, but I'm just going to show it to you so it makes more sense. So I want, basically, because it's to the half, I want all the pairs of x's in here. How many pairs of x's do I have? There's one. There's two. There's three with one left over, right? That can be written as x cubed square root x. Okay, that's one way to do it as well. Um, I'm... I know this is where we struggled last year, okay? So it's going to be, how can we make this look a little bit neater? Well, what if I have this? Let's see if you can figure this out now. Um, okay, so I have that, all right? I want to write that entire radical into a mixed radical. Okay? So the way I'm going to look at it is, what's the number that's closest to 15 that 4 goes into evenly? 16. Without going over. 12, right? So let's rewrite this. 4 through x to the 12 times 4 through x to the 3. Right? Now, knowing that this is x to the 12th to the 1 quarter,
What's 12 times a quarter? 3. x cubed, fourth root, x cubed. Okay? There's a mixed radical in which I have a whole, I have a, ra a rational number here, and an irrational I leave as is. Okay? This might be the easiest way to look at it. Find a numerical value that this guy goes into that's close to that without going over. Maybe the easiest. Alright, so let's go, let's work through the ones in our book. You're going to follow through and write these out in your book then. Okay, we want to write 5 root 3 as an entire radical. How do I write 5 root 3 as an entire radical? What do I change the 5 to? Square root what? Square root of 5 squared. No, plus Square root of 5 squared, right? Yeah, very good. Square root 5 squared times root 3. What is 5 squared? 25. 25 times 3 is? There it is. Root 75. Okay, write that out in your book. Gustavo, write it down in your book. Lucas, write it down in your book. Everybody make sense of this? Okay, again, I'll talk to you last year, but we did struggle. So we're going to make sure that we get a better start of it today. Uh, let's write this one. 2b squared b. Okay. So what do I have to do? Square root. Say that again. Square root of 2b squared. Square root of 2b squared? Sure. There's your first step, right? 2 squared is? 4. B squared times B is? B squared. What is it? Yeah. Right? You have two of them here and you times it by one more. How many does that make total? Okay, so the law for exponents is when you're multiplying with same base, is you add the exponents together, right? So this should be this should be written as 4b cubed. Like I said, the struggle that you'll have is with these variables. Okay, so I have minus 4x cube root. 7x squared. So we may need a calculator. Okay, so what do I do with the minus 4x? Cube root it and the opposite of cube rooting it is cubing it, right? So I change it to the cube root of minus 4x cubed times cube root of 7x squared equals minus 4 cubed is what? minus 64. minus 64 times 7 minus 448 448? thank you. so I get the cube root of minus 448 <laughs> So that's 64 minus 64 times 7, right? I've got x cubed times x squared. What does that give me? x to the 5. There you go. So far, OK? Okay, so far? All right. So this is going from a mixed to an entire. So the next step is go from an entire to a mixed. All right. Thinking about the process in which I did it. First one, I've already done one for you today, but let's do a little, a little bit larger number. Square root of 192. 
What value goes into 192 that is a perfect square? This is the only time I'm going to let you play with your calculators a little bit. So it can't be, right? So, okay, but that doesn't go into 192. All right, so this is what I'm looking for, and this is important to you guys to remember the all these numbers. That's great that you guys picked those ones up because when I told the grade tens, because of where they're at right now, is remember your first ten perfect squares, maybe eleven, right? So remember those, but they have to divide into one ninety two. All right, you also want to know your perfect cubes too, for the record. What numbers give you perfect? So one. Right? 8, 27, 64, 125. Those five, you're going to want to remember those. Okay, so 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125. Okay? But for right now, I need a, I need a perfect square. All right? What's the, what's the smallest perfect square that we know outside of 1? What is it? Yeah. It's 4, right? Does 4 go into 192? Yes, it does. How many times? Well, how many times did 4 go in? Just wait. Leave the calculators. Let's do some. God forbid we do that in this class. <laughs> okay. How many times does 4 go into 200? It goes in 50 times, right? And how many less 4s do I have? So we got 48, right? So you have the square root of 4 times the square root of 48. So let's start with that. Square root of 4, that's 2 root 48. Is there a perfect square that can go into 48 now? For me? Yes. Can you say yes? What does? What goes into 48? That's a perfect square. 16 times what? 3. So that equals 2, root 16, root 3. Right? So, like I said, calculators you could use, but why do we use them? So that's 2 times 4 times root 3, which is equal to 8 root 3. Quickly tell me the largest perfect square that goes into 192. 64. Yes. How did you get that? Uh, square root. 8 squared. 64 goes into 192. Okay? But this is a perfectly legit way of solving this question without a calculator. I'd love to see you do it often. More than likely you're not going to. You can take the calculator out. But it will be imperative that you remember those cubes, all right? 1, 8, 27, 64, 125. Okay, you want to remember those. Okay? So here's another one then. Cube root y to the 7. Okay? So this is the ones that cause us problems. We have issues with this. So my comment or my thoughts are. Um, how do I break this down? Well, what number does 3 go into that's close to 7? As close to 7 as possible. 6? All right, so let's do this then. Let's go cube root y to the 6 times the cube root of what? y to the 1. That could be 1 left over, right? That's the easiest way I can show you how to do this question as far as I'm concerned. All right, maybe there's an easier way. Maybe somebody has a simpler way. Okay, what's the cube root of y to the sixth? That's a tough one, right? Well, what did I say to do with that cube root and to change it to what? What is it? No, I want to change it to an exponent. What's the exponent? One third, correct? So if I go y to the 6 to the 1 third, can you guys figure this out now? y to the 6 to the 1 third is what? y 
squared. Cube root y. This is what I said, you're going to struggle. Okay? And there's not a calculator that's going to bail you out of this one when it comes to the variables. You're going to have to do this math in your head. You've got to figure it out. Whatever makes it look simpler for you, whatever makes it look easier. Okay? So what did I do? I looked at this number here and I said, what is the highest number that this can go into without going over 7? We said it was 6. So what do, I what do I add to 6 to get to 7? I add 1. So the cube root of y to the 6 times the cube root of y to the 1. Okay, let's try one more of those. So in the end it was just y squared cube root y. Okay, so what I was doing with the numbers is I was finding what is a perfect square that goes into 192? What is a perfect cube that goes into 32? To find out right what it is, right? Well, now I'm looking what n to the power of 4. How many n to the power of 4s do I have that go into 22? That's sort of what I'm saying to myself. Okay, how many n to the 4s do I have Go into 22. 25. How many? Five. It'd be five of them, right? Okay. okay, so five times four is 20, obviously, right? So I go four. N to the 20th, fourth root, N to the two. Ooh, nice. Equals. Okay? The fourth root of N to the 20th is N to the what? Good, Jamie. End of the five. Right? And then fourth root. Yeah. Okay? Again, end of the 20th to the power of one fourth. Why does that two just disappear there? Oh, it doesn't. Okay. It stays. Like, seriously? Yeah. It stays. Okay? You okay with this? A little bit better now? All right? Okay, so then your next step in the whole process is, and this is just for today, compare radicals, which are the larger ones, <coughs> put them into the order that is necessary for root 10. Two times. 42 to the 1 half, and 3 root 19. Okay. Okay. So to, ch to uh, work with this, the way it is, we want to find out which is the largest numbers. Okay? We want to put them from smallest to largest, let's say. All right? In order to do that, we have to all have them either as mixed with the same radicands, which is a little more difficult to do considering I have 149, root 10, and root 19. So to put them together is going to be tough to do, right? So then our best bet when we're comparing them is to put them into entire radicals. Okay? So we're going to put them all into entire radicals. So I already have the square root of 149. How would I write that as an entire radical? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, what did I do when I said I wanted to put this into an entire radical? What did I do with that too? And then what? No, an entire. What did I do? I squared it and I square rooted it, right? I'm going to do the same thing with 13. Okay, let's square it and square root it. Still 13, right? So I've got root 149 here. What does that become? Exactly, absolutely. Square root of 13 squared. Right? What is this one going to be? Square root of 160. 
4 squared is 16. Square root of 16 times the square root of 10. Okay? This one looks confusing, but it really isn't. It's the square root of 42, right? So 4 times 42 is? 80, 84. What is it? 168. Okay, so let, let me let me do this one in a second. Let me do two steps with this one. So this is 2 root 42, agreed? Mm -hmm. Right? So i got to square that and square root it, which is 4. 4 times 42 is 968. Okay? What do I do here? That's good. So what is it? 9 times 19. What's 9 times 19? 171. So now I have them all as entire radicals. What's the smallest one that I start with? 149. Which is it? Square root of 149. And then? Looking at your top row only. What's the next one in this? What's the next smallest? Four root ten. Four root ten. And then? Two times twenty two to the half. Yeah. And then thirteen and then three root nineteen. Okay. So what did I do in this process? I changed all my mixed radicals to entire radicals. And then solve them. All right. Anybody having difficulty with this process yet? Still? Yeah. Cody? Hey, Cody. Start here again. Start small. Cody, how do I change that so that it's into an entire radical? You multiply it by two. Say that again. Multiply. Okay. What do I want to change in order? What which part of this is not in a radical right now? The two. The two. So how do I change it so it is into a radical without making it a different number? I don't know. What? For me? I don't know. Okay. So if I square root it and I square it, do you agree, Cody? Fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Because two squared is four, right? What's the square root of four? It's two still, correct? Follow that so far? Now I got this. So now I just multiply these two together. It's the square root of 20. Okay? Three squared times square root two. Yes. Square root eighteen. Good so far. Another one. Mm -hmm. That's the pattern. Or you've got the process figured out. Okay, let's work it backwards now. Tell me a perfect square that goes into eighteen. What's the square root of 9? Uh, 3. So now I just work that process backwards. Does that make sense? Better? <coughs> okay. Is there other, anything else you want to look at process wise? You can start with that. Thank you. All right, the last thing uh, I want to do is just take a quick look at uh, example four. So I've got root 27 plus 2 root 12, and I want to add them together. Can I add them in the way they are right now? No, no I can't. Right? Apples and oranges. Okay, so can I change? Sorry? 
No. No, I wouldn't. Okay? Because actually, it, you're, like if I did, it'd be square root 4, right? Yeah. 4 times 12 would be 48. So that wouldn't work for us. Yeah. Right? So the moment I see these numbers here, the first thing I see, I look and I say, can I get a perfect square out of there? Can I get a value that's a perfect square out of there? Right? Less. Okay, square root of 27. What goes into 27 that's a perfect square? 25. Okay, so every time I say that to you, you give me a number that's close to it. But what I'm asking you is, what number can I divide 27 by? 9. 9, right? Exactly. So that's square root 9, square root 3 plus 2. Is there a perfect square that goes into 12? 4. 4 does, right? 4 and 3, like that, right? Correct? What's the square root of 9? So I have 3 root 3 on that one. What's the square root of 4? 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so I have 4 root 3 here. What does this actually equal? 7 root 3s. Okay, so I went through it quickly. What did I do? What's a perfect square that goes into this number? What's a perfect square that goes into that so that I can reduce them? And the way I look at this question and what I'm doing is I think of it like fractions. You have always been asked to reduce fractions. You've never been left with the final answer, right? So I want the simplest form of the fraction. I want the simplest form of this radicand. The simplest form of this radical. That's what I'm asking you to do. Basically what I want is I want this number to be a number that's not a perfect square. And once I get it to that, I stop. I can't do anything else with it. It becomes an inexact value if I use the calculator and actually calculate it up. Okay? Now you could, you could check your answers. You can put root 27 plus 2 times root 12 into your calculator, get the value out as a decimal, and then go 7 times the square root of 3 and get the value out as a decimal, and you should get the right, you should get exactly the same. So you could check your answers in this. The point to the exercise to do it without a calculator, but why not check your answers with a calculator? Right? Okay, you have the remainder of today to do. Um, all of 5.1. I'm going to go through 5.2 and 5.3 tomorrow because I think it's multiply, multiply and divide. I might not be here Friday yet. Okay. I'm not sure. All right. You know what? This is a short section. There's only three to it, so we're going to get through it this week. Alright, you'll be testing likely Tuesday next week, I'd say, on this. Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Well, oh, whatever, you guys are going to test Monday or Tuesday. That's Monday. On Tuesday, there's a flow chart. Okay, so we test Monday. Okay?